Hi fellow YouTubers, Maximoney1 here. I just thought I'd have a quick chat regarding my home built solar thermal system. Basically, I thought I'd start by giving you some um, pictures of the various components and then I can discuss exactly how I put them all together. I'll just try and run through it quickly. The first thing you'll notice is that the boiler room itself is small. This was purpose built in order to keep the ambient temperature as high as possible. If you notice right away that the walls themselves are lined with a jet rock which has been um, silver faced and the facing is basically reflecting the heat back into the boiler room. Now if you also notice that there is a gas boiler here which the normal function of um, produces um, extra heat gains and keeps the ambient temperature of the room just a little bit higher. I'll just show you the DC pump and if you notice that it's up higher than everything else other than the header tank which is basically there to give you the fluid pressure for pumping purposes but the DC pump being at a higher height than everything else means that you're not having to try and pump the fluid up a head of height. Um, all you're trying to do is circulate the fluid around the circuit. Now basically my um, system differs from the normal in that I have made use of the controller controller to activate relays which then give you the function of the diverter valves. Normally you would find that the relays would activate pumps and equipment such as that. My control systems are in two parts. Basically you have a PV um, photovoltaic DC powered pump, an LC pump, which varies the output depending on the intensity of the sun. Thus, in the low sunshine levels, the fluid remains longer in the panel and absorbs more heat. Obviously, in the high sunshine levels, you want it to move the fluid out of the collector quickly through the solar coil, thus keeping the panel cooler and improving efficiency. The second part of my control system is the solar controller. And if we just look here, that's the display for the solar controller the electronic part of the solar controller and the relays in that operate these diverter valves the one point to note is that the stat for the um, fluid coming from the collector isn't actually located on the collector. A lot of the systems you see nowadays they measure the collector temperature. I don't do that. I measure the temperature of the fluid right before it's due to go through the solar coil. Thus way all the losses in the pipe work etc are taken into account and it means that I have absolute control over the temperature of the fluid that passes through the solar coil. Just one small point to be aware of, 
the start measuring the temperature of the solar collector fluid when it gets to this point here has to be well insulated in order that it doesn't get influenced by the ambient temperature of the room you need to make sure that the start is only measuring the solar fluid temperature so how it all works basically that DC pump there is powered by the small photovoltaic panels on the front of the solar thermal collector as the sudden intensity increases so does the power output of the pump which thus means that the fluid getting pumped to this point here through this highly insulated pipework comes up to this diverter valve this um, the diverter valve default position is that the fluid would normally come back through this pipework here and recirculate to the collector. Now on the parameter where it um, meets 8 degrees above the tank temperature at the bottom of the tank then it will go through the diverter valve to this point here and the default for this is through the solar coil on the bottom of the tank. The only time this diverter valve here activates is if the temperature at the top of the tank is greater than 85 degrees it's a safety mechanism and in that case the start would activate the relay in the solar controller which would open this valve up sending the fluid to the heat dump radiator. It's just an additional safety mechanism um, for when you're away on holiday, perhaps in the middle of summer and temperatures can get really high. This is what you call a dual coil tank. Basically you've got the main heating coil here which is powered from the gas boiler and then down below you have a second coil which is powered by the solar. This is great in the summer you basically get all your hot water powered through the solar system but unfortunately in winter the solar gains are not so great so you do need the gas boiler backup going through the higher coil. There you can see the solar control display As you can see there's not a lot of gains to be had today in this Drich weather. Anyway guys, I hope that was helpful to some of you. Thanks for watching, bye for now.